If you're learning or trying to get into Vim or NeoVim, there are certain commands you must know. Here are 30 commands or concepts in Vim that I think are imperative to any good Vimmer. Now these commands start off pretty easy, but they get more and more intense as we go along. So stick around, it's gonna be fun. Now the first thing we wanna do is edit a file. And I have one prepared, so to do that, we wanna type nvim, which is short for NeoVim. That is the command we use to enter NeoVim. Then we put the name of the file after that, and we're in. Now first things first, to quit NeoVim, it is colon Q. Colon opens the command prompt and Q stands for quit. Hit enter and you're out. There you go. I just saved you a lot of time. You're welcome. But in all seriousness, let's open this file up again and let's get into a few concepts. Now this video is going to assume that you know at least the basic concepts of Vim like H, J, K, L. Those are the direction keys. H is left, J is down, K is up, and L is right. Left, down, up, right. Or Ladur for short. Ladur. So let's start off by replacing a word throughout this document. Now let's say I want to replace post with something else. To search for the word that's under our cursor, we can type star. Star will match all occurrences of the word that was currently under our cursor. Pretty straightforward. Then we type shift N to go back to the previous match we just looked for. Or we hit N again to go forward in our match search. Capital N goes backwards, regular N goes forwards. Or you could just keep hitting N to cycle through all of your matches. Now to change something in Vim, we use the C motion. That means change, but you can append things to the end of the change motion. I like to append IW or in word. So I like to do change in word and that will delete that word under my cursor and put me into insert mode and I can change it to whatever I like. Then all I have to do is hit N to go to my next match for that previous word. And to replay what I just did previously, I can just hit dot. So in my case, that was CIW from post to poops. There you go, nice and concise. But there's an even more interesting way to change all the occurrences of a word to something else inside of a file in Vim. That is the sed command. Now to use the sed command, you wanna type colon, which opens our command prompt in Vim, percent, S. And after this, we want to type a regular expression. So let's type slash post, and you can see it's matching in post. Then we type slash again to give us the thing we want to change it to. Poops again, why not? It worked last time. Then you type slash G for global, for you know globally finding and replacing all the words in this file. If we hit enter, there you go. In one command, all of these matches were changed. Pretty cool. But there's one more thing you could do here. You could type that same command, but put a C at the end of it, and that will ask you for every single match if you wanna make that change. So if we hit enter on this first one, I don't wanna replace posts controller with poops controller. That's not what I wanna do. So I hit no, then I wanna replace this one, hit Y for yes, Y for yes. And there you go. That's a cool way of using the said command with confirmation. Okay, now let's go over another scenario. Let's say you're in this document and you wanna copy something and paste it somewhere else in the document. Now, in order to copy something in Vim, you wanna use the Y motion. That stands for yank. That will yank something into a register, which we'll go over later. And then you can use that to paste it somewhere else. But I like to prepend the yank motion with visual motion. So I like to do VIW, which I don't know if you're remember earlier, but change in W meant change in word. VIW means visually highlight in word. So now I'm visually highlighting this and I can take actions on what I've just highlighted. So if I push Y, I have then yanked that word. Now I can go somewhere else in my file and hit P to paste it. Simple as that. But now let's say I want to yank another word before action, yank. Now I go down here and I paste, and now I'm pasting before action. But what about the thing I yanked earlier? Where is that? Can I still use it? Now before I show you where that yank text went, and trust me, you're going to want to know, it's pretty cool. I want to mention really quickly the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of lessons in data analysis, math, programming, and AI. So I think learning a little bit every single day is one of the most important things you can do when learning something new. And Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in just minutes a day with lessons you can do whenever you have time. It's the opposite of mindless scrolling. Now, if you're watching this video, chances are you're interested in programming. And Brilliant has a huge number of programming courses to build foundational knowledge and learn real world applications. 
applications. Whether it's Python, lower level things like data structures, loops, design patterns, or just learning how to think like a programmer, Brilliant has you covered. Try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash typecraft. Also, you get 20% off an annual membership for life. Anyways, let's get back to Vim and figure out where that pesky text went. Well, as it turns out, you can, because Vim stores everything in registers, and we can see our registers by typing colon reg for the reg command. This shows us all of the registers and their contents in NeoVim. Typically the way this works when you delete something or you change something or you yank something, the thing you made an operation on gets put into one of these registers. Typically it starts at zero and then increments by one for every action you do. So if I yanked one thing and then changed another thing, the previous thing I yanked should be in register zero. If I keep going from there, it'll go to register one, register two, et cetera, et cetera. So if I yanked, deleted, or changed something, something previously and I want to use that value to paste it again, I didn't lose the value if I yanked something else. I can say paste something in the third register down here. And to actually paste something in, for example, the third register, we want to prepend it with the double quote. So we do double quote three for third register and P for paste. There we go. We just pasted the contents of our third register. Pretty sweet. And you can also yank things to specific registers as well. So if I want to highlight this whole entire method, I can type double quote seven yank and that will yank this to the seventh register. So now if we type colon reg again to look at our registers, we see in our seventh register, we have all the stuff we just yanked. So now we can go down here and type double quote seven P and there we go. That is what we had in our seventh register. And I find that super helpful if you want to manage the stuff that you're copying and pasting throughout files. Registers give you a great way of doing that. But here's something that's really cool. There are actually special registers in NeoVim that do specific things. The one that I like to use all the time is the star register, which is the system clipboard. Now it's the star register in Mac OS, but in Linux, it's the plus register. I don't know off the top of my head what it is in Windows. I think it's also plus, but I could be wrong feel free to correct me in the comments below. But when you yank something to this special system clipboard register, what it does is it allows you to copy and paste things from Vim into other programs. So if I visually highlight this text and I do double quote plus yank, I just yanked these four lines into the plus register, which as we said before, is a special register in NeoVim that is the system clipboard. So let's just say I have another program that I want to paste this contents of this into. Maybe I'm slacking with one of my coworkers and I want to paste the output of whatever I just copied from NeoVim into a chat. Since I yanked these four lines into the system clipboard register, if I just do the normal command for pasting into any other program, which in Linux is control V, it's command V in Mac OS, we can see that the stuff I copied from Vim is now available to any other program. This is super helpful and I use this all the time. There's another fun little special register that I don't really use, but I find it interesting. The percent register always holds the name of the file that you currently have open in NeoVim. And that's the percent register. So if I do double quote percent P, I just pasted the name of this file. Now, I don't know if I find this super useful, but you could do something fun by going into the command line in NeoVim and typing, let the register at system clipboard be equal to the output of the percent register. If I type that and then I go to another program and just paste, you see I paste the name of the file. I've used this a couple of times at work, but I don't know, I just thought it was fun. <laughs> You could use that if you want. Now there's one more command or concept that I think is absolutely imperative to know if you wanna be good at Vim, and that concept is macros. So let's go over a scenario. Let's say I have um, this data that I've copy and pasted into a file. This is a Ruby file, but it isn't valid Ruby code because I just pasted an array from somewhere into this file. To make it valid Ruby code, I have to go to each line and make sure these are double quoted lines and type a comma at the end. This will then make it a valid array in Ruby. But I don't wanna to have to do this for every single line. That's ridiculous. How can I make my life a little bit easier? Well, macros will save your life here. A macro basically stores and then can replay actions that you take inside of Vim and you can record it manually yourself. It's pretty easy and it's actually very fun. To start recording a macro, you type Q and then you type a register that you wanna record it into. I'm gonna type the letter H. And you can see at the bottom here, it's saying recording at H, meaning it's recording a macro into the H register. So I, now I just edit one line here and make sure I keep in mind that these changes can be replayed on every single line. So I do insert 
I add a double quote, I go to the end, add a double quote, add a comma, go down, and then go to the beginning of the line. Now, if I hit Q, I am done recording my macro. And to replay my macro, I do at symbol and the register I recorded it into. So that's at H. And there you go, it replayed my macro. Now the coolest thing about this is you can prepend with different motions replaying a macro. So if I do something like five at H, it's gonna replay my macro for the next five lines. And I can do at H again, and I'm all done. Macros are extremely powerful in NeoVim, and it's something that you should absolutely learn if you wanna master NeoVim, or Vim in general. Now if you like how Vim looks on my machine, I have a whole bunch of videos, a whole entire course actually, on how to set up NeoVim. It's called NeoVim for Noobs. Subscribe and check it out. And hey, thanks nerds.